Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad that everyone called into our Remo Power Hour and also they had tuned in to our Remo Power all across the world. Um, uh, this is the Bible Study Hour of Remo Faith Ministries International to where God is glorified, the church is edified, and the world is evangelized. Uh, is this your first time tuning in? Let me introduce myself to you. Uh, I am Dr. Brian W. Credder, the pastor and founder of uh, Rima Faith Ministries International. We had started a ministry back in the year 2002. Uh, we have been on radio here in uh, St. Louis uh, on uh, station uh, KXEN 1010 um, for a couple years, but then also in years 2004, 5, and 6 that we have uh, went over into the Philippines to where we were led of God to do miracle crusades and also that uh, there were some churches that were planted there. And we are a prayer there, everyone, if you will, just uh, keep us in prayer uh, for those ministry over there and for the people that are over there, um, that God will protect them because there is a high level of terrorism uh, over there and even, as we know, across the world. So then also, um, we planted churches about three years ago here in St. Louis. Uh, at 5939 Goodfellow where we hold services every Sunday morning and we are, are cordially inviting all of you all to come out and, and worship with us and uh, where you experience the preach word of God you experience the presence of God as we participate in a worship and praise service so then uh, we hold services every uh, Sunday at 10 o'clock and come out and worship with us and those of you who are out of town that you will come in and uh, stop by and visit with us and uh, and we'll praise the Lord all right with us and I tell you if you need a church home River Faith Ministries is the place for you um, no uh, uh, we have no gimmicks no tricks uh, we all we have is Jesus uh, so then uh, on tonight uh, we are studying the book of John and um, we have been going this is week 30 I believe uh, that we have been studying the book of John and we have made our way uh, to uh, John chapter 9 uh, John chapter 9 and on last week we had stopped right around verse 7 and uh, so we're going to ask everyone if you will turn your Bibles to uh, John chapter 9 and uh, we're going to uh, start at verse 7 and we're going to read first through uh, uh, John chapter 12 John verse 12 John chapter 9 starting at uh, verse 7 and reading uh, through verse 12 <coughs> Lord we thank you we praise you we give you all the glory and honor and the praise thank you oh God for being so kind and so wonderful in our lives oh God in the name of Jesus we come tonight we praise you magnify your holy name we give you all the glory. You are so such an awesome God in our lives. As you show forth thy love for all of mankind. When you sent Jesus, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, to come and die for our sins. Um, and we just thank you now. And that he rose early that third day morning with all power in his hands. And the Bible said at the first day of the week, dawn of the first day of the week, um, that uh, he was in the garden. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. Uh, even now, in the mighty name of Jesus, forgive us of our sins. Uh, anything we have done that was displeasing in your eyes. And Lord God, and as we come tonight, that you will look upon us as we study your word. That you will grant us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high. Open up our understanding. Help us to receive your word. And that we will be able to share your word. Apply it to our own individual lives. And also to share with those. For we are, we are the light of the world. Uh, and we are the light in this dark world. For somebody need to know that Jesus loves them. And Lord God, let us live our life to the utmost till someone will say, Who is this Jesus for whom that thou knowest? And Lord God, we give you glory, give you praise, even now, in Jesus' name. <coughs> Turn with me to uh, John chapter 9, and uh, we're going to start right around verse 7, 
and we're going to read uh, down through uh, verse 12. John chapter 9, starting at verse 7. And I need, I solicit your prayers. I need your prayers on tonight. Uh, I have been running all day, and uh, and uh, I need your prayers uh, for strength on tonight. John chapter 9, starting at verse 7, and it says, And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors therefore, and they uh, which before had seen him, that was he that was blind, said, Is this not he that sat and begged? Verse 9, Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? And he answered and said, A man uh, that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes, and uh, said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received my sight. And they said unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. So said the word of God in uh, John chapter 9, verse 7 through verse 12. And this is a very, very interesting, interesting uh, part of the scriptures. Uh, as we look at Jesus, uh, he healed this, heal this man that was born blind, man that was blind from his birth, and his disciples uh, uh, asked Jesus, who sinned, this man or his father? And we have learned on uh, last week that uh, Jesus said, Neither this man or his father has sinned, but that uh, uh, the father uh, may be glor glorified in him. So then uh, we, we, we learn historically that uh, during that damn time, uh, the, um, uh, the Greek uh, mythology or philosophy and the Asian philosophy that was going around that time as when they deal with transmigration or another word as reincarnation that if a person has basically sinned and did not repent of their sin before they died that they would their spirit will enter into another person's body that they may be judged so and with uh, with the, this uh, movement or with this uh, Greek movement or ideology that's what the term comes from so um, it, it, it points towards as some would say a generational curse but yet we know that all curses Jesus uh, took upon him on the cross so then uh, this was a myth it was a, uh, a Greek mythology or a, uh, Asian mythology or philosophy that they try to employ when it comes to religious affairs so what is that saying that uh, people you have to be careful of uh, uh, some people that that wants to take psychology and mythology and put them merge them with the word of God <laughs> some ideologies um, that are, are in our world today or some people that who are employing as to be the word of God isn't the word of God that's why we have to get the foundation the foundation of God's word in our hearts that the Holy Spirit may quicken our spirits and let us know what is right, what is wrong, what is an erroneous doctrine, and so forth. And so, uh, uh, Jesus made uh, spit, uh, uh, made clay out of spittle, and uh, he anointed the man's eyes, and uh, he said to the man to go wash in the pool of Siloam. So we understand. We also learned that. Uh, during that, that day, day and time, a person that was diseased uh, in their eyes, that they used spittle to anoint that person's eyes to help them in the healing process. So Jesus, in that custom, if you will, uh, spat on the ground, took the dust of the earth, and made clay and anointed the man's eyes. 
So, but this man, I understand this. This man had no idea what was going on. He don't know what G. He's blind. He doesn't know what Jesus looked like. Never to know, uh, knowing the, the doctrine of Jesus. He, matter of fact, as we go along uh, through these passages, we'll find out that the man never even heard of Jesus. So, what is that saying, people? On tonight, on tonight, that that um. Uh, there are people in the world who are blind to the things of God, the consciousness of God, as God as the creator or God as their father and Jesus as the Messiah. And the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. But because, because they are not aware, if you will, because they are not aware or have a consciousness of the things of God, that does not mean that God will not touch their lives. Are you hearing me? Think about it. Think about it. When we were doing our own thing, we was in the world doing our own thing. God, the Holy Spirit, touched our hearts and we made a bout face and we gave our lives unto him. <laughs> so, uh, so, so this man didn't know Jesus. He didn't. Uh, couldn't see him because he was blind. All he knows is that there is someone who spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and put on his eyes and anointed his eyes and said, go wash and wash me in the pool of Siloam, which means sin. So observe here, the man, the blind man had to, to, to receive uh, his sight that he had to obey. One, he had to have faith, and two, two secondly, he had to obey. So his 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 uh, his obedience was predicated off his faith. And, and what is that saying? Is that when Jesus said, "Go wash," he had the faith and belief that in Jesus' word. To when he said, "Go wash," he would be obedient and go wash. Oh, you hear me? So then, therefore, our obedience to God is predicated of our faith maturity. Understand this, everyone is not on the same level of faith. Some of us, uh, we have, some of us have tried faith. Tried faith, tested faith, if you will. And some of us just coming along. And tested faith is a proven faith. Uh, to show not only not God but show us where we stand with the Lord or oh, you hear me so he had faith he obeyed God and it was predicated off his faith of his belief when Jesus said go wash he received that and he was obedient and he went and washed in a pool so what is that saying to us people? So many people has missed out on their blessing, have missed off on missed out on their healing, have missed out on their miracles because one, though they have faith, they were not obedient. Oh, you hear me? You know what the scriptures say? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Oh, you hear me? So, <laughs> so, so faith and obedience work hand in hand. So when we obey God, even though our, our faith may not be where we think it should be or the ideal or where we think it should be, when we obey God and believing His Word, when we act on His Word, our faith increases. Oh, you hear me? Though, and that's, the, that's one of the areas as it relates to going through trials and tribulation. Now understand that this man had a, un, uh, a situation that was beyond his control. He didn't have nothing to do with, he had nothing to do with that he was born blind. But that he was born blind, that God may be glorified. So two things here, that, that um, you had... Uh, when we are in a, 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 a uncont uncontrollable situation in our lives, something that we did not incite, something that we did not sow, and, and now we are weeping a negative harvest, or a harvest of corruption, or trials and tribulation, or or we've been tested. You see, and, and when you are, or when we are being tested, you know what? You, I, and I found this out through through the lifetime, and particularly, man, and I tell you, particularly during the last thirty nine months, people have their eyes on you to see if God is going to bring you through. And when God brings you through, or you hear me, that God is being glorified, or you hear me. 
So the works of God may be manifested in this man's life. So it is that the works of God may be manifested in your life. So despise not every everything you might not understand. Everything you may not understand, if you may not be able to see the end of the tunnel, you may not be able to uh, um, uh, understand everything that is going on. Although you've been going to church on a regular basis, you have been giving your tithe or offerings faithfully, you've been sowing seeds not only in your local ministry but in the life of people and other ministry, but then it seems like, man, that all this stuff is coming at against you. But I tell you, God is speaking on you tonight or speaking tonight and he said, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Wherever your pool is, where he has sent you, he said, go. And when you are obey God there lies the blessing the miracles the healing that you have been looking for or you hear me <coughs> and I wish I uh, had this this um, I don't want to reach back on my wall but I have a a, um, a something that the Lord gave to me when I was first going through this first 39 months of trial and tribulation and persecution maybe I, I'll, I'll read it for you on um, uh, next week, but it's back there on my wall. I just don't want to turn my back on you and get it. All right. So then, but 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 people have their eyes on you. Some people are hoping you fall. Some people are hoping you are smothered. Some people are hoping that you are overwhelmed. But I tell you, I tell you, people on tonight, no matter how long you are going through, God will get the glory out of your life. And it's not just for you, but it's for everyone who is around you. Are oh, you hearing me? So this man says he, he, he obeyed God. And uh, he went and he washed in the pool and he came seeing. He received his blessing. He received his miracle because he obeyed God. Now observe here, now observe here in verse 8. It says, the neighbors, therefore, when they which before had seen him that was blind, said, Is this not uh, he that had that set and begged? Look at that. That is very important. Because they say the neighbors, which means he, he was known among the community as a beggar. And there, hey, there are some people, there are some of you who are known for the things you do, you used to do in the world. They said, the neighbors said, therefore, uh, they uh, and they which before had seen him which was blind. There are some people who, who remember you before you accept Christ in your life. Your neighbors, whoever they are. Your family members, uh, people of your community, people you used to hang out. Well, no matter what it is, whether you game banging or your drinking partners or your clubbing partners. Yes, clubbing partners. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You've been there, done that, because you have not always been saved. Or you hear me? I have not always been saved. I'm so glad that Jesus touched my life. So then, um, he, uh, he said, he goes on to, he said, the neighbors, therefore, when they... Uh, which before had seen him that was blind say is this not he that sat and bed people will understand this people people all the people is not going to understand the new you the Christ that's in you they're going to look upon you as what you were before Jesus came into your life before you had Jesus to come into your heart or you hear me People, there are always, there are always people who are going to try to bring up your past and even try to have you to reflect on your past, to go back to your past. <coughs> they say, is this not he that uh, sat and bed? And I tell you, the, the, the enemy knows when to uh, send someone your way to try to get you to regress and go back to the things that you used to do. Someone always coming along that was in your life before you were saved. Oh, you hear me? Want to bring up the past, the things you used to do. Uh, um, whether you was drinking, whether you was a party animal, whether you was um, 
uh, a, a prostitute or rather uh, you was a drug addict, you know, trying to bring those crowds back to you. And sometimes, now observe this, this is a true fact, that sometimes when you are going through, when you are going through your trials and tribulations, that tends to be when Satan wants to send people your way. There are the things that you used to do, and you'll reminisce, remi uh, uh, reminisce on the things that how much fun that you used to have versus going through all these trials and tribulations. Oh, you hear me? But I tell you, people, getting uh, having Jesus in your life is better than having any kind of good time that you have in the world. Check this out. Just because you are born again, just because you have been regenerated, just because you have uh, uh, professed to be a Christian, that does not mean that you stop having fun. It's the type of fun that you have. Oh, you hear me? So, <clears throat> so he says. So he says here that. Uh, the, they, the neighbors say, is this not he that sat in bed? People come, is, this, is, the, is that her that, that used to uh, sit at that bar and drinking and were or promiscuous? Is that not he that used to be staggered around the block you know, with a bottle in his hand? Is that he that used to have a needle uh, stuck in his arm? Is that she that used to have a joint stuck in her mouth? And this keeping it real, or as uh, the young people say, or as they would say, keeping it 100 or oh, you hear me you know and you know what if we learn like Jesus did that when we become when we were saved that we inherit compassion for those who are in the world because we knew where God where Jesus had brought us from and we all have a compassionate heart and we want some people to experience Jesus or oh, you hear me so they want to remember him for what he once was. And then in verse 9, uh, he said that some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. And I tell you people, when you have the hand of God on your life, when God had changed your life, some people, I know it's someone out there, some people are not going to recognize who you are. Have you ever had somebody come up to you and say that, uh, now, you, now you know you went to high school or whatever club and whatever, and they come to you and say, man, I know you from somewhere. Because <laughs> they don't recognize the Jesus that's in you now. Or oh, you hear me? And then you have to tell them, yeah, I, ain't, I am the one. I did this, I did that. But Jesus made a, a change in my life. Now observe here, the neighbors, um, they said, um, uh, some said um, that it, that is him, some said it is like him, and, he, and uh, he had to tell them that I am he. Now then, it's, uh, verse 10, they said, therefore uh, said unto him, how were thy eyes open? They remember that he was uh, that he was blind. He was born blind. He was set on a road, uh, buying, uh, begging, uh, making a living to the best way he know how. And now that his eyes are open, he see everything. The people are wondering. Say, how were your eyes open? Have you ever experienced that in your lifetime? That, 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 I observe this, I observe this. Have you ever experienced in your lifetime that the Lord had really been blessing you? And, 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 and you got the, some of the naysayers, even in the, in the church house or wherever, don't think you even deserve to be blessed. Well, they, they ask, how, how you end up getting a new car? How you end up getting a house? How you end up getting new clothes? How you end up getting your hair done? Because they used to see you all messed up and all jacked up. But I tell you, it's just a sure blessing and miracle, uh, uh, even when Jesus come and change your life. How you, did you receive your sight? How did you receive your miracle? How did you receive that good paying job? How did you get that job that paying double uh, that you used to work uh, that you used to pay? The the inquiries uh, of a changed life, 
And that's how that's how you know that God is working with you and God has got his hands on you, that, that people are always wondering that how you end up where you are. Yes. It might be a thing that you you you, you started out homeless, but now you live you are living in a two hundred or three hundred thousand dollar house. They wonder how you end up with that. I just saw you on the street. I just tell you, I tell you the people that God will He works just like that, and He will turn your life around. Are oh, you hear me? So they they are inquiry, they are inquiring how his eyes were open, and then uh, verse eleven he goes on to say, uh, uh, he answered and said, and I observed this. Now check this out. He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, and said unto me. Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received my sight. Look at that. He said, a man called Jesus made clay. What is that saying? He really didn't know who Jesus was. He said, a man named Jesus. And, and, and that's okay. Because it's a starting point of uh, this man's life been turned around. And, and, and I tell you that, that uh, uh, when you share your testimony, when you share the love of God, the love of Christ among this world, people may not know right away uh, who Jesus is. But you plant the seed and the Holy Spirit gives the increase. The Holy Spirit does the drawing. <laughs> Are you hearing me? So say a man named Jesus. So somebody had called out Jesus for him to recognize that it was Jesus who anointed his eyes. Now, uh, and then two right there that he knew or he understood, although he said a man called Jesus made clay, and, uh, uh, out of spittle and told him to go wash in the pool and he did and he came back seeing he understood that it was not the, the clay that made a spittle that healed his eyes for he said it was a man named Jesus told me to go wash who made clay out of spittle and anointed my eyes and I went to wash and I came seeing and I received my sight understand this Understand this, that Jesus used uh, this clay uh, uh, made of spittle as a catalyst uh, to accompany the man's faith that he will go and wash. Now, let's put it in our modern times. There's a lot of us who call, use what they call blessed oil to anoint a person before they are laying hands or before they uh, pray over them or um, um, they may uh, put a talit prayer shawl on someone and they go out in the spirit or they may be healed because of the, uh, of the oil that was placed. Now understand this, it is not the oil that brought about the healing. The oil, understand this, the blessed oil is an instrument that God uses to accompany a person's faith that they may submit to the will of God and receive the healing power of God. Or oh, you hear me? Or oh, they raise their hands in their effort to receive. Now it's not it's not the it's not the person for whom God uses, but it's God uh uh channeling through that person to the recipient that they may receive their healing. Are oh, you hear me? So then, uh, it's just like uh, giving an example. In one of our miracle crusades that we uh, did in the Philippines that on the last night that uh, 
uh, the Lord led me to pray for all the, all the pastors and leaders that was there. And, and, and the, they were anointed with oil, and we, we, we prayed, and we blessed God, and, and uh, uh, the Lord had uh, 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 overpowered them, uh, uh, overwhelmed them with His power, and they fell out as dead men. They fainted on the ground with the Spirit of God upon them. But then, uh, after the, the, the service, after the service, that one of the pastors uh, came unto me and he asked me that if he could have that oil, if he could have that oil, he said, because I felt heat go down through my body. And I remembered that he was one of the ones that uh, went out in the spirit. He said, I felt a heat on the inside of my body and I couldn't control myself. He asked, could he have that oil? But then I, t I had to tell him that it wasn't the oil. And the Lord always spoke to me. The Lord had spoke to me. And he said not to give him the oil. And he brought by the way a Simon who are in the book of Acts. You remember Simon the who was at one time a sorcerer. But yet uh, when Philip preached that he was delivered. But yet he wanted to regress and saw the power of God. And he wanted to buy the Holy Spirit. But yet with this man who wanted this particular oil the Lord, the Lord said not to give it to him he wants to sell it are oh, you hear me and I tell you people that the power of God is not for sale prophecies is not for sale the, the, the anointing of God is not for sale there is there is a spirit of Balaam is going around uh, the states and around the world the way and era of Balaam had penetrated the body of Christ and he had to go into the name of Jesus <laughs> as well as around this nation as we're dealing with the uh, spirit of Jezebel and then the ones who uh, uh, the guys who yield uh, to Jezebel had the spirit of Ahab are oh, you hear me Look it up in the first case. So then, but then, yeah, let me get back to this. I, I guess that was meant for someone to hear. Get get uh, back to this. He said, um, they said, how were thy eyes open? And then he says that uh, he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and came and received my sight. Then observe here, in verse 12, as the dialogue continued to go on, it says, uh, talking with the man whom Jesus healed, told go to the pool of Siloam. And he says that, then said they unto him, talking about the neighbors, those who were around, those who were um, uh, about him or knew who he was, they said, uh, they said unto him, where is he? Look at what he says. He said, I don't know. So he received a miracle from Jesus. They asked where Jesus is and he said, I don't know. And I tell you people, the question still rings out today. Where is he? And when you have Christ in your life, our response should not be, I don't know. We should be able to respond and direct them to the presence of God. Even if we stand there and pray with them that the Holy Spirit will be ushered and come upon that man's or uh, woman or that girl and boy's heart. The question is ringing today, where is he? When the God, they, the, the inquiry uh, turned from, um, it turned from uh, when the neighbors uh, said uh, unto him, um, 
Oh, who? How were their eyes open? Why? How were they? Your eyes open to the ass to where is he? And I tell you, people, when your life is a testament to the things of God has done in the in your life, somebody somewhere ought to be asking, where is he? Where is this Jesus that turned your life around? Where is this Jesus to where he has healed your body? Where is this Jesus to where you received this miracle? Where is this Jesus that gave you a breakthrough? Where is this Jesus while you was going through and he sustained you? Where is he? And I tell you people, even for those who are out there, where is he? He, once you receive, you have to receive him. Uh, and acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior, and he is close. He is cl uh, as close to you as the the uh, the closest prayer. Deep down on the inside, someone even has been born again. You have been going through, and you ask the question: Where is he? Sometimes, people, we look too far for the answer. Our answer is right down there within. Are you hearing me? And sometimes the Lord just might want you to wait. Sometimes, you know, God does not say yes to every prayer we have. Sometimes he says no. And if you don't hear a yes or a no, then he wants you to wait. And while you are waiting, while you are waiting, that you continue to move forward. You, you go into your daily prayers. You go into your daily devotion. You praise and worship God even while you are waiting. You go to your job. Think about it. Think about this. Some of you all have even right now, right even now, has gone through some things in your life right now that if the average person who is looking from the outside really will have lost their mind. So even in the midst that Jesus is sustaining you. Where is he? He is right there. You may not always feel him, but you have to know. When you go through, when you have these uncontrollable circumstances, <coughs> you may not always know. Or feel, you may not always feel the presence of Jesus, but you have to know he is there because your faith says, as in his word, Jesus said that, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Until the end of ages. Not until you, you go through, but he's going through it right through with you. Where is he? But the man's response saying, I don't know. I don't know where he is. As a matter of fact, early on he gave education, I really don't know who he is. But I observe here, look at here. In verse 12, it said, uh, Then said they unto him, uh, where is he? He said, I know not. Then verse 13, said they brought to him the Pharisees, they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was on the Sabbath day when Jesus made clay and opened uh, eye, and opened his eyes. So, so these religious leaders, if you will, uh, didn't have a problem with this man receiving his sight. But their problem was that Jesus healed this man on the Sabbath day. And that gives indication, as we discussed on last week, uh, how you can misconstrue uh, the purpose of God, even as it would come to the purpose of the Sabbath. It's a day of rest, but that does not excuse the fact that you should be doing good. Because Jesus always did good on the Sabbath day. He asked earlier, he asked earlier, uh, is it uh, uh, unlawful 
to do good or evil on the Sabbath day? Oh, you hear me? So the Pharisees, the religious folk, had a problem with Jesus healing on the Sabbath. And we have a lot of people who has the Pharisaic mentality because uh, they had uh, placed the tradition of the elders over and against the Old Testament. So what is that saying? Every, each and every denomination defines their own traditions. But when you rely, if you will, on your denominational doctrine or, and traditions over and against what the Word of God says, then you have a problem. God's words, God's word rules and it super rules. Oh, you hear me? So, so you don't want to have a Pharisaic uh, mentality to where you're self-righteous because of your traditions. I tell you, I, I'm so glad I had to put a plug out here. Let me get a drink of my tea. I had to put a plug out here for my uh, late pastor for whom I did most of my tenure under the late pastor, Dr. Ron L. C. Bridewell. And he was truly a Bible preacher and a Bible teacher. And, it, and he passed on those attributes and the characteristics under uh, to the ministers that was under him. He always talked about school. He always talked about uh, relying on the Holy Spirit. And quiet as his kept, people might not even recognize it, but he was a prophetic preacher. Are oh, you hearing me? So, in essence, that in, in, uh, we all, uh, I am a Bible preacher and a Bible teacher. Now, understand this. Every preacher isn't a teacher, and every teacher isn't a preacher, but God has blessed some to be a preacher and a teacher. And the teaching moment is, is not supposed to be taken advantage of for, a, uh, for not be an opportunity for a preaching moment. We, that's another subject when they say, you know, I will talk with that with under some other leaders, if you will. But but uh, you don't want the Pharisees mentality. They took him before the Pharisees because he healed, Jesus healed uh, his eyes, made clay on the Sabbath and healed this man's eyes. And I tell you people, everybody, is not going to like the fact that one, that you have been blessed, and then two, they don't think God ought to bless nobody but them. Nobody has a monopoly on God. God will bless you just like he blessed everybody else. God will bless you like he blessed the others. God will bless you like he blessed uh, other people. What is for you is for you. The danger, what some people get into, they covet other people's blessings or other people's ministries. People, I tell you, I tell you, you don't know what a person had gone through to have that elevated ministry, that 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 thousand, ten thousand ministry, or the person uh, who God keep blessing uh, beyond understanding and blessing abundantly. You don't know what all they have gone through. What they went through was for them, and what you are going through is for you. Somebody else may not be able to go through what you are going through. Our, oh wow, I observe this. Our tribulations, our testing is only designed for us to help other people. So then they put him before the Pharisees. He had no idea uh, where Jesus was or even who he was. So then in 9, John 9 and 15, he goes on to say, Then again, the Pharisees also asked him uh, how he had received his sight. And he said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I wash and do see. Now, he said he. Now, beforehand, but um, 
um, he said, Jesus. Now you know that uh, 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 that the Pharisees had problem with Jesus, and the blind man at some point in his uh, um, uh, standing in front of the Pharisees realized that. Uh, the Pharisees had problem with Jesus, and he come along and said that he put clay on my eyes. Now, people, when you are faced with opposition, when we are faced with opposition, are you going to acknowledge or deny Jesus? Are you going to call him by name? Are you ashamed of the name of Jesus? For Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my Father. So he said, he put clay upon my eyes, and I washed and do see. And then in verse 16, he said, therefore, said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God, but because he keepeth not the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such a miracle? And there was division among them. And this is one of the occasions where Jesus brought division among the people. Some people thought he was a sinner, thought he was no good, if you will. But there were some people there who had taken up for him because they know that anointing and the calling that was upon his life. They said, how can he do these things and being a sinner? Now observe here. People are going to question you. Especially if you have a calling into leadership or into the, the preaching and teaching ministry. How are you? How is, is he going to preach the gospel when he used to do this, that, and the other? Don't worry about what folks are saying. If you know that God had turned your life around, if you know that he had called you and then also commissioned you, then you don't worry about what people have to say. Even when God had have have blessed you. And with miracles beyond the understanding of the people. That you keep on believing and keep on moving. They say, how can, uh, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among the people. They said unto, him, they said unto the blind man again. What says thou of him? That he said, oh, he he that said, he that opened thine eyes, he said he is a prophet. So he went to saying, first he said that Jesus told him to open his that Jesus may play uh, 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 may clay a spittle. Then he started trembling in the presence of the Pharisees, and then he said, a man. Then he came back and interrogated him again. And he said, what do you say about this person? And this man said that he is a prophet. Jesus is more than just a prophet. He was a prophet. He is the kings of kings. He is the lords of lords. He is the Messiah. He is the savior of the world. So he said he, he is a prophet. And then he goes on to say in verse 18 of the Jews, but the verse 18 says, But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. Check this out. The, stop trying to convince people that God has blessed you. Stop trying to convince people that Jesus had changed 
your life. There are going to always be some people around who are not going to believe that Jesus changed your life. There are going to be some people around who cannot believe or comprehend or to understand that God had the audacity to bless you. Hey, God can, uh, can bless for whomever he wants. So don't be on the guilt. Man, I tell you, don't be on a guilt trip. Don't be ashamed when Jesus bless you <laughs> because people around don't understand the relations you have with Jesus and Jesus blessed you. Don't feel bad. People have a thing of uh, trying to make you feel bad because Jesus been a blessing and have blessed you in your life. And the best thing you can do for them, hey, and tell them, uh, you can call on Jesus too. He'll bless you too. He'll get that miracle too. He'll get that healing too. And there are haters out there who are jealous of your relationship with Christ. In the church and out of the church, everybody is not happy when God will, has blessed your life. Are you hearing me? So then he goes on to say, in verse, uh, say how verse eighteen said, and um, been blind and received his sight until they called his parents uh, that uh, received his sight. So he, they called his parents. They go call up some witnesses because they don't believe this guy was blind from birth. They don't believe that he was blind at all. So they go call up some witnesses. And don't be surprised that the, the clique will come up against you and want to find out where you got your blessings from. <laughs> or oh, you hear me? There are some cliquish people in the body of Christ that don't want you to see be blessed. And it should be known, you can tell her exactly where your blessing come from. But I observe here, they call this man parents. And said in verse 19, and it said, and they asked him, they and they asked them, saying, Is your is this your son whom ye say was born blind? How then doeth he now see? So they go go ask his parents, was he born blind? And how did he receive his sight? And you know, and, and that's that's how you know. Uh, uh, that's how uh, people are. They want to come to your family members and want to find out how you get your house, how you get your car, how you get a good paying job, how you are able to achieve your education. Yes, how you receive your education after 15 years because you kept on plucking. Are oh, you hearing me? Because Jesus kept orchestrating you. That, that Jesus had, had, had blessed you so, <laughs> so they can't believe it. Now they're going to want to ask your friends or your neighbors. That one song says that don't ask my neighbors. But you know what their parents did? The parents, uh, verse 20 said, His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But what, verse 21 but what manner he know he now seeth, we know not, or she had opened his or had opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. And he shall speak for himself. And I tell you people, it's so easy. It is so easy to get on that gospel, that gossip train. That gossip train. G O G O double -S, S I P. You don't want to get on that gossip gossip plane. You know, uh, uh, want to find out and interrogate all these other people, trying to figure out uh, why they get blessed, how they get blessed. And there are people on the gossip train want to find out how you got blessed, want to look into your background and all they can see that you was blind or you was doing the things that you want to do, but they don't want to acknowledge, yes, that it was Jesus. 
that change your life. Don't get on that gossip train. Shut it down. If they want to know something about someone, that's, as with the parents, uh, the parents said here, the parents said here, said that he is of age, ask him. He could speak for himself. If somebody want to know something about your neighbor, send them to your neighbor. Don't try to, to, to employ their ideology of gossip. Say, so go ask him if you want to know how, how he got that house. If you want to know how he got that car. If you want to know how his body was healed. If you want to know how he get that miracle. If you want to know how she got that breakthrough, ask them. They can speak for themselves. And I tell you, people, that would shut down a whole, whole lot of gossip. That flows through the body of Christ. Just send them to the person for whom they are inquiring about. Just tell them, say, I don't know. Go ask them. Oh, he's hear me. And then two, with the parents, they understood the concept or the idea that just to mention the name of Jesus among the Pharisees or the Sanhedrin Council would get them stoned, would get them killed. So they uh, refer them back to the man, their son, for whom that was born blind. I tell you what, I'm going to stop there and uh, we go pick up on verse 21. Uh, John chapter 9 and verse 21. That's where you're going to pick up on next week. And again, I thank you all. Man, I love you all so much. Thank you for calling in to our and tuning in to our uh, Rima Power Hour, which is the Bible Study Hour, uh, Rima Faith Ministries International. Uh, download our ministry app. It's a free app, Rima Faith Ministries International. And you can catch all of our sermons and all of our uh, Bible studies no once it hit YouTube that it will hit your phone uh, you can follow the ministry it's a wonderful app to have we have over 9,000 people around the world who has it downloaded within the last 18 months so download download our ministry app and also like us on Facebook uh, Rima Faith Ministry International St. Louis and uh, I'd invite you all to come out and worship with us uh, I, uh, uh, I can worship with us at 5939 Goodfellow, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, 63147, where we hold services every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And I invite you all to come out and worship with us, have a glorious time in the Lord. And also, uh, go to our website, uh, rfim.org. And you may read more of my profile. There are some teaching material I have out there as well. Uh, God bless you. God keep you, Lord God. I thank you and I praise you. I give you the glory, honor, and the praise. Thank you for your word on tonight. And Lord God, that as your blessing flows in our lives, that we will direct them back unto you. For you are the source of our miracles, of our healings, of our blessings, and uh, every good thing that comes in our lives. And Lord God, I, I thank you for everyone who tuned in, everyone that have called in. I speak in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone sick on the videos, watching the videos or on this call, I speak healing in their life right now in the name of Jesus. I give you glory. I give you praise in Jesus' name. God bless you. God keep you. Look forward to seeing you on.